Hi there, Abby here. I've got an easy project for children. I get a lot of children in my sewing clubs. I also have a lot of people who have children who aren't quite old enough to join my clubs, um, as young as five, but they're very capable. I've taught children as young as five how to sew and they've come away with bags, uh, kimonos, would you believe, at the age of five, bunting, all sorts of things. So here's a really easy project. Now I've got two sheets of fabric here, which I've cut. Children love cutting with scissors. So give them this project to do. Draw a square for them. So I've got two pieces of fabric. I'm using denim and a cute uh, duck fabric. My fabric measures, let's have a look. It measures, is it in inches or we sew in centimeters nowadays? So it's 48 centimetres, so roughly 50 centimetres will be fine. And we're going across 18 centimetres. So if you want to, you can do about 50 by 20. Just do numbers that are easy for you. But roughly, that's what we want to do. So I've pinned it. Now where I've pinned it, don't pin. When you're working with children, don't pin around the edges. There's no point in doing that. They don't need to take the pins out. And then what I want you to do is grab a ruler and get them to do this job. Get them to draw the lines. This is great for them to increase their cognitive skills, their dexterity. It improves their drawing skills. It improves all sorts of thinking skills, doing numbers, doing all sorts of things. Uh, sewing is a great skill for anybody. And you're not going to draw the lines, your child will. I mean, if you're, if you're making this for your craft fair, for example, or you're making this as a gift, why not? So what I want you to do is use the same measurement all the way around. And then what happens is you come to a cross there. Where you've got that cross, that's your pivot point. Okay, so that's where you will leave your needle in the machine and turn the fabric. So you can see this pen is fantastic. It's just chalk with a rubber at the end. So I'm going to use the same width and I'm using a width of one centimeter all the way around. Okay. So mark all the pivot points. Okay. Now the next thing you need to do is have a turning hole. I'm going to create a turning hole around here somewhere. And the way I mark my turning holes is with a T. So I always mark my turning holes with a T. So that what happens is that area isn't going to be sewn. And using this fantastic pen, you can actually erase that line. Okay, it's quite a big turning hole. You don't need it that big, but we're working with children. So that's fine. That T there is where you'll start. Go all the way around using the pivot points. So pivot points, pivot points. And then you come to this last, a second T. And that's where you'll start to so lock the stitches. I've done a video showing you how to lock stitches. Very easy. All you do is reverse, but go and watch that and learn how to lock if you're not sure. But to show your children, it's a nice one to do. Let's bring the machine in. We're just on a regular straight stitch. Now this is fantastic. Remind the child that this oval hole here is where the needle sits. So that's very important for us to see the T in that hole, right? So once you can see that T in the hole, just move forward. Now I'm going to show you slowly. So I'm doing three stitches forward and then I'm going to continue. Now the child is going to do this very slow or if you're a beginner, this is going to be very slow for you. But I'm a little bit more experienced, so I'm going to speed it up. And I've come to the corner and I'm going to leave that in there. I'm on the cross. Lift, turn, and let's go. And that's pivoting. Leave that in there, so needles down, turn and go. I've set the machine to, with the needle to stay down every time I stop.
make sure I reach my second T. Stop and then do one, two, three stitches. It's done four, that's okay. Three and four, whoops. And remove. Okay, it's a fancy machine. It's a Innovis F420. Um, right, so there we go. We've got our three pins to remove. Okay. Now, don't worry about the fabric not being ironed there. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm showing you on this side because that's where I've drawn the lines and also because you can see my white contrasting thread on my blue denim. Okay, so let's trim the fabric. What we want to do is we want to get close to our stitches but not cutting those stitches. Okay. Right. If you have pinking shears, kids love pinking shears. Get the kids really enjoying their project. Crocodile teeth, we call them. We've got our turning hole, so let's flip that through. Move all that away. Now I need to bring this in because I'm going to move my machine. Switched it off. I'm going to use my mat, which I've created. Watch another video and you can watch how to create these mats that I've made. And it doubles over as an ironing mat. I've put a heat um, thermal wadding in there to protect my table from heat. Okay. Now you need to push the fabric. You don't poke, you just slide across. If you slide that fabric across, you get yourself a nice, now these are dinky irons, they look cute. They are still very hot. They still get as hot as a regular sized iron, so don't be fooled. They're just very handy for seamstresses or tailors, as we like to know ourselves. Uh, sewers, sewists, whatever you like to call yourself. Okay. And then what we'll do is, we're going to challenge your child or inner child with another task and again you can get your ruler out and mark it with a pen but we're going to top stitch all the way around our wallet so we're going to do our pivot one more i think there we go and i'm eyeballing this against the inside of that clear plastic foot doesn't look much like a wallet yet. This is where the fun begins. So we've done our two strips of fabric and now we just want to fold it all up so that it forms our wallet. Now you can decide to have the denim on the outside or the contrasting fabric on the inside. And that's what I'm going to do. So I've got my flap there and I'm going to, actually, I think I like that flap better. So I'm going to have that like that. So what I'm going to do is that's going to be my flap. Can you see what we've done there? So it sits like that. So it's a case of now, that's going to be the inside of my fold. So I'm going to just, there. Right. And that's the inside of my pocket. Let's fiddle with it a bit more. You know, we need to fiddle with this until we get it we're happy I think that's a little bit big so I need to can it, we can go further up a little bit now, once we've got everything matching And there we go. Looks like a wallet there, doesn't it? Done all that. It's now just as simple as we're going to secure our stitches along the side there and along there. You don't come across the bottom there. If you sew across the bottom there, 
you'll find that. So I've got my chalk wheel there. And what it does, draw along that line. And that's going to be the section that's going to be seen. That section isn't going to be seen because at, at the, the time of the wallet's closed. That's where we're going to have our press studs. Or we might just have one press stud in the middle. I think two will be great there. So let's do that. So I think for this, you could just do a few rows of decorative stitching. Or what I'm going to do is just put some ribbon there, which I think will be perfect for me. And just lock that into place. Any other decorations you might want to add, add all your decorations there. You might want to write your name on there. If you've got a fancy machine that can do fonts, you could write names on there. You could put all sorts of uh, appliques on there. Um, you could have something that was quite big, and then when you open it, you see the rest of it, like funny faces. So I've folded it all back in position we're going to sew along this top stitch line that we created at the start so let's get rid of that thread that's under there Just hide everything. hopefully when we sew along there when we flip it over it matches the top stitch along there hopefully your lines that you drew were all accurate and they all sit on top of each other but I can see that hopefully they're sitting there and they're lined up there can you see the lined up there and there? So hopefully everything matches up. And that happens. So start further in. So I'm going to do a reverse. And I'm going to lock that into place. Okay. So there we go. Now hopefully... I have got a double stitch there. Right, anyway, let's persevere. So we'll go to the other side. If you find your machine struggles, maybe use cotton. I've used denim here, which is quite thick. And in that case, I've actually have uh, one, two, three, four layers of denim with the four layers of cotton. But there we go. So there's my wallet. The next part is to add fastening. You can use Velcro, you can sew uh, a buttonhole on there and just a regular button. Um, I have snap fasteners. So I am going to just create a couple of holes. I'm going to mark it. Let's do it there. I'll just do it one inch in and just as the width of the tape measure and then one inch in at the top of the tape measure I'm going to create two holes there you might not be able to see this okay and just there just about to see the mark. Now there. Squeeze that. And then there we go. So there's our wallet. It's such an easy project to do. Let the kids have fun with it. It's very easy, very simple, and so much fun. Have fun with the kids.